Hey everybody, welcome back to the Paladins of the West Kingdom. Let's keep building that kingdom. Okay, round two. Although, actually there's a couple things I forgot about at the end of round one. After you pass, as you might imagine, you clear out all your worker placement spots. They all go back to the supply. So I should have already done that. All you peasants, back to your peasanting life. And let's see, yes, okay, so there we go. And uh, new peasants and others will be available for recruiting. Okay, and see a whole bunch of criminals right there. That could come in handy. We've already revealed the king's second decree. And, uh, right, we've got to draw three and pick one paladin again. So, hey, here's what's-his-name, which uh, gives me the conversion discount. He's still hanging around. And uh, what's his other name, who will give me money if I conspire? <laughs> it's uh, Crime Pays in the West Kingdom. And let's see here. Uh, um, Auton, who... Wants me to engage in trade, like you saw Jen do. Now again, I'm going to pick one of these. Uh, one of them is going to go back to the top of my deck, and then one's going to go to the bottom. And I misspoke in the first one. It's not the first guy. It's the first three guys, for three paladins you see, who you will see show up in the final round, the seventh round. Which was also a misspeak on my part. I said eight rounds, because I, I was just I had a brain fart, and I saw eight cards, but I totally forgot. Hey, look, when we get to round three, two things will be revealed. Durr. So, um, there are seven rounds. The final around our first three paladins we said no to come back for one more shot. And folks, by the way, this is why you always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on so that when I do misspeak like that, Paolo catches me and notes it up. So anywho, which of these... So I could bring this guy in now. That would be nice. But, right, a conversion only costs one. Only costs one. So he's not like he's be saving me that money. I want to save him for like my you know my third or my fourth or my fifth conversion, so he'll actually save me some more cash. So if I send him away again, I gotta pick between these two guys. Some conspiracy, make a little bit of cash, nice. And he comes with a merchant and a peasant, or um, and get, make even more cash the legal way, and he comes with two merchants. Let's see here. And now I also need to think about, what am I going to do? This guy would temporarily increase my influence. This guy would increase my strength and my faith. I need to think about, what am I going to do? Because, hey, we just found out we need to be garrisoning the local towns. Garrisoning requires strength. The more strength we've got, the, the, the further afield we can go, and the more access to nice bonuses we've got. So if I get him, that's not bad. Because, hey, he'll give me two faith, which means I could recruit the Barbarian or the Warrior, or convert them. Let's see, and again, the Barbarian, his thing is I'll get points if I kill. And I'm not necessarily planning on killing any of these people. I'd rather convert them. So if I have two faith, I could get the Warrior, which is a point for every four faith I've got at the end of the game. So that's actually a pretty nice fit. Let's see. Although, uh, the other guy who would give me uh, money if I conspire, although I don't need to conspire, although, actually, I should say, I might need to, because, let's not forget, Jen is the first player this round, so she might grab those criminals before I get a chance. So, let's come back to me in a second. I mean, everybody's thinking about this at the same time when they draw their three, but we do resolve them one at a time. So, Jen's got Roland, and uh, other French guy, and other French guy. Okay. So, recruiting costs no silver. So if Jen, let's see, which of these five might she want to recruit? Well, she wouldn't mind getting the gatekeeper to help offset the costs associated with, um, although it's, it's actually, what do you call them? Um, can't think of the word. The provisions you really need, but hey, you make money as you build up. So that'd be nice because the can't, you know Jen's already starting. She wants to get that finished. So getting this would be worth four bo um, points to her. Only costs, not points, uh... Four, four coins. It only costs one coin, though. And so she could go really expensive. Get this defender who pays for killing, or this debt collector who gives you a, a warrior after you pay your debts. That's what this little flip symbol is. Or this squire who, if you have no suspicion during an inquisition, your faith increases. Ooh, that's pretty nice. If Jen decides never to be suspicious, this squire would be pretty cool. And normally he would cost two to recruit, but um, having Roland here means she could recruit him for free. And she would have a fighter and a peasant, and she gets first dibs on those. But okay, so if she was gonna recruit him and try to ride that squire to victory, what does she want to do this turn? Uh, she'd like to develop some more with that architect because she's making the provisions that she will spend trying to garrison the out in the countryside. To garrison, she needs strength. 
She has one strength currently because she got that from her first uh, fortification. So with one strength, she could garrison in this town. And you can see there are four places to go if you garrison. You can make two bucks, you can recruit somebody for free, you can get a peasant, or you can get rid of suspicion. Although these two only exist in a three or four player game. So the first town only has two places to garrison in this two player game. If Jen's planning on garrisoning and with only one strength, she could go quick. But if she gets this guy, she has three plus one, so she'd have four total strength, which means she could actually, well, she could garrison the first or the second town. She'd need five strength to garrison in the third town. But if she comes here, she'd get a scout, get rid of suspicion, get money, or recruit for free. If she could get out to this town with more strength, uh, you know, the rewards get better. She could clear out entire areas, so she could do a given action a second time without having to pray and spend money. Um, if she can make it out here, she could actually forgive her debts. Uh, you know, and so they just get nicer and nicer, you know, or, or pick up two workers, etc., etc. So Roland here would give her four, plus one is five strength, which means she could garrison out here. Or she could go for the lower ones. But since there's only two spaces in the lower ones, and this would be a temporary boost to her strength, she has enough strength already to boost. Although all three, which remember which one of these ones she gets, she will get some strength. So she also needs to think about... Well, but she's still coming back to him because of the recruiting for free. But remember, if, Jarrison, or if Jen is quick and Garrison's over here, she could recruit for free anyway. And let's see, trading, getting more money, and getting a couple of merchants. She already has a merchant. Now, garrisoning requires a merchant and a warrior, and somebody else. Although, again, if Jen were to develop, it would require one less person. Although, it always requires a warrior. So, um, Auton here does not give her a warrior. So, if she is going to want to garrison this turn, she probably... And if she is going to want to fortify, well, she, she knows she's going to need... Oh, no. She's going to need a scout and somebody to fortify. She's going to need a merchant, a warrior, and somebody to garrison. If these are the two main actions, she's going to do this turn. But remember, she might get more guys along the way. So I think I think it's going to be no to Auton. But then her next decision, does she put him at the top so he'll come back immediately next turn so she can have another source of cash and merchants? Or does she go to the bottom, at which point she won't see him until the final round? Oh, tough choices. Let's see. Is she going to attack this turn? I mean, attacking is nice, too, because attacking uh, requires, let's see, attacking requires strength, which Jen has one, which means she could attack this barbarian. If she beats the barbarian, she'll make two bucks, and she will immediately increase her influence. And you need more influence. Remember, Jen needs more influence to fortify. She wants to fortify a second time. And in fact, um, you know, getting that influence mostly comes from attacking or commissioning. So maybe it makes sense for Jen... Yeah, I think Jen is going to go on the warpath this turn. Right, okay. And then, which of these goes to the top and which goes to the bottom? More money in round three or recruiting for free? I think she likes recruiting for free. She likes the sound of that. So she'll put that and she says bye bye to Mr. Moneybags. But again, she'll say hello to him again in the final round. Okay, so Jen has chosen her second paladin. She's got um, a total of four strength and one faith. And if she attacks, she makes cash money. So look out, guys. Uh, we're com Jen's coming for you. Okay. And she gets a fighter and a scout, which again, she's already thinking about that, what she needs. And she can now recruit any of these. And she'd like to, I mean, Jen has decided to stay on the straight and narrow, get no suspicion, never have to worry about that. Although suspicion is nice. You saw, I was suspicious and it made money for me. But the problem is, when you draw suspicion, these all have two coins, one coin, or zero coins. And there's nothing worse than getting that suspicion and getting no money for it. It's a bit of a gamble to get suspicious. So I don't think Jen's going to do that. She, let's see, is she going to do any of God's work this round? Does she need a cleric? If she's going to garrison... Or if she, see, if she was going to commission or absolve or convert, she would. No, I don't think so. She's going to get two merchants and two scouts. Does that sound good? Yeah. Two merchants and two scouts. Okay. So Jen has got her Magnificent Seven here, ready to go. And so that's gone. And now... Uh, so that's a lot of thinking. And now let's come back to me. I've still got to go through all this process as well. I mean, you know, the, the choosing of the paladins at the beginning of every round is the single most impactful, important decision. It affects everything. It affects what you'll be able to do in the round. It affects what your last round is going to You know, all that stuff. So am I going to conspire, get some more suspicion, and make some money? 
Am I going to trade and make some more money? What am I going to do? I've totally forgotten. Okay, I know I want to convert again because I get these bonuses. So I definitely want to take advantage of that. And for conversion, I need a warrior and I need a monk. I've already got, or a cleric. I've already got my... Neither of these guys give me warriors, though. But that's okay. I can get a warrior plus two ne'er-do-wells over there. So I think... You know what? Since I'm going to take this, I don't think I need to conspire and get even more suspicion. But am I going to bother trading? Well, okay, but remember, it also matters. Um, let's see, I need more faith. The more faith I have, the more... And, and so this guy gives me some faith. I have... Uh, but I can, I can convert this one for zero. I can convert this one for two. And I'd rather convert this one because I feel if I'm never going to fight anybody, this won't give me any bonus points at the end of the game. Whereas this would if I keep working my faith. So with that in mind, I will take Mr. Trading Guy and uh, Mr. Conspiring Guy. Wait, have I already put one on the top of the deck? Yes, which means i got to say goodbye. I will be able to conspire in the last round of the game, potentially. Or, I mean, I can conspire anytime I want, but conspire with a bonus. So, I have got my second paladin. And we are ready to go. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, and, yeah, I'll go on ahead and get two ne'er-do-wells. And a warrior. And a merchant. And say goodbye to that. Okay, and because I took two criminals, I got two suspicion cards. One, two, and let's see. Oh, baby. Yeah, I hit the jackpot. Four. Although, I've caused a problem for myself. Because it's coming out of taxes. One, two, and now there's no more, so I take the rest from the big supply. Three, four. I'm rich, but the Inquisition is here again. And once again, Jen is pure as the driven snow, whereas I'm all kinds of bad, so that means I take on a second debt card. That's three more points I'm losing at the end of the game. If I don't uh, absolve myself of my debts. And um, I get rid of half of these rounded down. So I get rid of one. So now I'm going to stay suspicious. But hey, I'm rich. Everybody's in town is wondering, where. how did he get all that money? Well, uh, none of your business, I say. All right, so. Um, so the next Inquisition is going to hit me again with more of these negatives. And hopefully, uh, the, you know, it'll, the crime will pay at the end. All righty. So... Wait a minute. Oh, and I have two merchants from my guy as well. I totally forgot about that. So there we go. So here's my seven since we both saved one from last turn. Now we can get a going. And what was Jen up to? Oh, man, this is a lot to keep in my head. Right, what did Jen want to do? Oh, she wanted to recruit that guy because, you know, if Jen had had this squire uh, when that Inquisition just happened, she would have gotten um, uh, an increase to her faith. And remember, all three stats, as they increase, they're worth more and more points. As you do anything, if you develop enough, it'll be worth points. If you do commissions, i.e. send monks out to occupy the towns, it'll be worth points if you do it enough. But you got to do enough of anything, uh, enough uh, uh, absolution, etc., etc. Right. Um, right, so Jen knows... She is going to want to fortify again, which means she's going to have to use this guy, and she's going to have to use somebody, unless she develops again, in which case she could fortify with just a single scout. But to be able to fortify, she needs some influence. She, all right, that's right. She was going to kill. Uh, she was going to attack somebody because she makes money when she uh, goes out and takes them out. So to attack is going to require uh, a scout and a warrior, and again, somebody else, maybe one of these merchants, again, unless she develops. So, and so she could say that. So, this could be two of the actions, and then Jen still has two guys left over. Although, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. And how much strength does she have? She has four. Three plus one is four. So, she could kill this one or this one to get provisions and influence or money and influence. Okay. And she could do this right now. But Jen has four bucks, so the first thing she could do is, if she wants, she could develop. And I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to develop with these. Unfortunately, she has no lowly peasants, so she's going to have to wait. It's a perfectly good scout and a perfectly good merchant. And there goes her four silver. And she is going to develop, which is going to give her another peasant. And does she want to... Oh, you know, she's all about the fortification, so she will... Now, she can fortify with just a single scout. Okay. And she got her um, she got her peasant, and she paid all her cash. And remember, she gets another provision because of her existing architect. So she's got three provisions. And, I mean, she's going to need... The more she builds these, the more provisions she's going to need. She's planning on doing two, three, four, five. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six provisions she's ultimately going to need before the game is over. Okay. So that was Jen's first action. She has developed again. All right. Making her 
prime thing, fortification. And now, back to me. I've totally forgotten what I was going to do, but I can do anything because i got all these criminals. Criminals. All right, so I know I'm going to convert. I say, oh, and my guy, I want to trade. So I get two. I mean, so normally I could send a single guy over here and get one, or I could send two guys over here and get three. But either way, I'm going to get an additional. So I want to send at least one guy over there to get three bucks instead of one. But I am so loaded. Now you do get, um, you know, all your excess resources at the end of the game score you a few points, but not very much. But you know, I'm I'm drowning in cash, and remember, I'm going to need that cash for as I'm recruiting more and more people. Hmm. Also, having all this cash on hand lets me, or you know, convert. Lets me convert and recruit. So all that cash comes in handy. Alrighty. Let's see here. Um, what do I want to do? Also, having a lot of cash makes it easier for me to attack because this is the one action you can pump money into to temporarily increase your strength to get a bigger attack. Not that I'm planning on killing anybody. All right. So I know I'm converting, which is this. All right. Again, I can use my wild card and um. Right, I know I'm going to do at least one trade to take advantage of him. What else am I doing? I've got four guys. Garrisons, garrisons are attractive. I might want to do some garrisoning, which we got one of my criminals to fill in for that warrior and him. And then I'd save, I'd save one criminal for the end. That'd be pretty good. And I would have done one of the five garrisons I need to do to get the king on side. And um, my strength. Well, my strength is going to keep on going up. If I convert, I'll get more strength. And the more strength I have, the more, the further I can garrison. So that's interesting. All right. So I think that's what my plan is for the round. To do these actions and save this criminal for later. Or I could send him in here to get two more bucks. But nah, I'm already getting extra money because of what's his name. So Jen has done her first action. I will do my first action, which will be... Since I can see, I know Jen is going to attack because I know she wants to, or else she would have chosen him. I got to be a little bit worried. If I want to recruit, I better or convert. I better do it now before uh, you know he uh, takes a long walk off a short pier. So, oh, hello. I didn't. Sorry. So if I use this and this, I need to put somebody else to work. Hmm. Okay. Right. So here's the problem. I don't have, I mean, I'm going to have to waste a criminal. Oh man, that's really painful. Maybe I don't garrison this turn. I don't have to. If I do garrison, let's see, what's, if after I do this, my strength will be 1-2, because I will have taken her. A strength of 2 only lets me get into the first town for garrisoning, which will just get me more money or recruit for free. Um, let's see, I didn't even think about who I might recruit. Let's see, if I have that architect, I might be a little bit more inclined to develop as well. I mean, that squire will never be any valuable for me. I do have debts, though. So taking on that debt collector would be pretty nice. Uh, let see. Or do I need to get one more strength so I can jump to the second? Because then I can get another scout and I can do more work. But that means I need three total strength. Which means if I take out this barbarian, I'll increase because I'll get two instead of one. So that means I'll get enough to do a better job of garrisoning to get another worker so I can complete everything I want to do. Or, alternately, get rid of my other suspicion. Maybe that makes more sense. But it's just, I don't particularly want to go down an attack route by recruiting him. Let's see, if I had seven faith, I could get this assassin. But then again, the assassin gives me points for killing at the end of the game. Not what I'm interested in. <clears throat> Let's see. And unfortunately, I mean, if I was playing a three-player game, I'd totally do it because I'd get that peasant. Because that peasant's who I would need to do either my other step on the garrison or the trade or what have you. And maybe I just don't care about garrisoning right now. It's not like I'm getting any kind of bonus or benefit for it. If I'm going to convert... See, here's another thing I could do. If I'm going to convert and get my strength, I could then pray with one of my criminals. He could pretend to be a priest and pray because i got plenty of money. I could clear this out and do a second conversion. Yeah, I could. Oh my gosh, I could. But I don't have the right people again because, you know, it'd be one criminal for this and then I'd clear out the conversion... But the problem is, I would need another warrior and another cleric, and I've only got one criminal. I could conspire again to get another criminal. Then I'd have two criminals. Wow, that's crazy. But I could do it. And I'd still have enough time to do a little bit of trade as well. What the heck? Let's go for that. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be crazy. So I send um, you know, three people over here, and I'm going to convert. So what is my faith? My faith is two, which means I could convert either of these. And I will go on ahead and stick to my original plan to convert this warrior. All right, which immediately gives me one strength 
and gives me another in-game goal that I'm going for of getting a lot of faith, and that cost me one silver. Okay. And uh, so that was my action, and I've still got these. So I've still got four more folks to put to work. Back to Jen. I've or, fortunately I've laid all this out, so I can remember what Jen was trying to do. All right. So she developed first. Now she'll go on ahead. Right. Oh no, she doesn't have the um, to fortify. She needs the influence, and she has no influence. How is she going to get the influence? I've totally forgotten. Because she needs one influence. Oh, she actually was going to attack. Attack! Okay. So Jen has a total of one, two, three, four strength. But if she want, and if she had any coins, she could pump it in to go to six or eight or ten strength. But she's totally broke because she did that develop. So she's attacking with everybody, and her strength is four, which means, well, it's going to be this guy because I just took that guy out of the picture. So Jen will attack him, and for doing it, her influence increases by one, and she gets two coins, thereby getting close to another inquisition. And so Jen takes this. And it doesn't slide underneath because she hasn't been converted. He's just dead. But there could be points at the end of the game for the number of, of these guys you've killed, depending on what the king's third edict is going to be. So Jen will just keep this over here. She got her strength boost. No, she hasn't. Or her influence boost. She got her influence boost. She got her two coins. All these people were put to work. And as you can see, it took strength and it paid off in influence. All right, so Jen's got that. And um, all these... Uh, Outsiders saying, what the heck? Maybe we should go. Maybe this is not the best place for us. All right. So that was Jen's turn. Back to me. Back to my turn. Okay, now I'm going to conspire, thereby converting this merchant into another dastardly thief. Oops, I can, I can only do it once. All right, so now I've got the three thieves I need. All right, did I need... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Did I need that? I've totally forgotten. Oh, that's right, because I've got to pray. Yeah, so I'm going to conspire, which gives me this guy, right... Right? And it gives me another suspicion, which is only one coin this time. Still can't complain. Man, that's a lot of cash money. Um, right, so uh, that was it. I just conspired, became a bit more suspicious, got some more money, and now I have got... So this guy's going to pray. These three are going to convert again. I'm going to do a second conversion. But wait a minute. I was going to do a second conversion, but my faith is two, and Jen just killed the other guy. I need four faith to do that second conversion. Oh, no! And, and these aren't going to slide or get cheaper. Ugh, drat. Okay, hold on a second. And maybe, maybe I don't convert after all. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because I'm not going to be able to... I mean, I was going to pray to clear this out so I could do a second conversion, but I do not have the faith to pull it off. So, with these people in mind... Should I go for something else and just uh, do another conversion next round? I mean, I've got all the cash I need to do all the conversions I want by the end of the game. I mean, there are other things I can do. For instance, I now have two debts. That's six points I'm going to lose at the end of the game. Perhaps, perhaps it is time to seek absolution. All right, let's do this. Let us send a merchant over here. And i got to send some, uh, one of anybody over here. It'll be another merchant. And I will use um, this guy. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. To stand in for the priest I don't have. Now, um, the total influence I have indicates what level of absolution I can do. And currently, I have no influence. I have zero, which means I can do my first absolution. I need to get influence before I can do any of these other ones. So I will do zero. Abs or, yeah, I have zero influence. It costs me one coin to do this. That's my one problem I don't have. I'm crazy rich. And now I can... So these people sought absolution, a criminal and two merchants. And now I can get any of these bonuses. This is another way. Instead of praying and spending money... I could clear this area out, but I got money. It's not, or, or I could increase my faith, or I could get two provisions, or I could flip and get rid of one of my debts, which currently are negative three points, and if I flip it, it becomes one point. If I was going to do that, though, I kind of wish I had recruited, where was he, this debt collector? Because when I pay off my debts, I get a strong man on my side, so I could do more work. Oh, but I'm going to be out of guys. Could I recruit somebody this turn? Um, I would need two guys to do it. Right, so I just don't have enough. Uh, um, unfortunately, I used three here. Uh, but anyway, so I'll still go with it. So, or, 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 I could recruit somebody for free. 
like say this debt collector I was just talking about who would normally cost me two bucks or another debt and now he's not gonna do anything for me um, but as soon as I start paying my debts off I'll get more workers so I'm I'm you know I'm turning I'm making a, a debt engine with this guy Oh, I kinda like that yes let's do that okay so now I mean I don't mind taking debt because as I pay it off through absolution I get more rewards okay so remember this uh, and also you'll notice I've just earned some more faith I've actually got some faith now. Hooray! So my faith is now three, which is still not enough to get that guy. Although, again, I'm done converting because, hey, now I've only got one more worker left for this round. Okay, so uh, that was it for me. I'm probably going to pass next turn, uh, which means I'm not even going to take advantage of this guy to get two extra money. But it's not like I want that money, really. Oh, well, um, Jen's turn. Right, so she's already attacked. Right, so and now because she attacked, she got... The, um, the influence she needs, so she's going to fortify with just a single dude. And so she needs one provision and one influence, both of which she has, to fortify a second time. And that gives her one strength and one victory point at the end of the game and one peasant. So Jen is going to keep on working. All right, so her strength goes up, which is going to help her with fortifications later. And she's got that point coming at the end of the game. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And she's done two of the five she needs to do. All right, so that was Jen. And she got another worker for her troubles. Hooray! Okay, back to me. Um, I've got one guy. I don't think I'm going to do anything. I'm just going to save him. It'll be good to have a criminal going into the third round so I can do whatever I want. So I'm passing, at which point I clear all these folks out. I, I'm saving him. And I could start thinking about, you know, what's my next one going to be. Jen, meanwhile, she's going to keep on working. I mean, I'm drowning in money. She's drowning in workers. So, uh, right. Oh, she's already done her attack. And she's already done her fortify now. Let's see. Oh, oh, I forgot. Because Jen attacked, she got two silver. Which, by the way, clear created another inquisition. Arg! And Jen still hasn't gotten her squire. That's right. She was going to recruit that squire. But she can't because she has no warriors. Ah, so much stuff. All right, so anyway, so she made two bucks off of this last turn when she attacked. Um, and I've totally forgotten what I just did. What did I just do? Did, oh, I, 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 saw, I saw it absolution. Which, um, right, doesn't change anything. I, I didn't make any money off the absolution. So this happened before, and I was still the most suspicious, so I get another debt. And I don't get rid of that suspicion. But hey, I can convert these into points and workers now that I've got my debt collector. So I don't particularly mind. As you can see, I've got two opportunities to pay off debt over here. And if I can provision or send monks out through commissions, I can uh, pay off debt out there in the world as well. It's about the only thing I haven't talked about is commission. It's um, like I've talked about garrisons using our guys and spending provisions to send um, garrisons out here to get these bonuses. Instead, we can use our faith and our provisions to send monks out and get these bonuses. So those are two different ways to skin that cat. All right, so anyway, I'm passing. I'm done. Jen is still doing stuff. She, she's got cat. Oh, oh, and of course, we refill the tax. What is Jen going to do with three dudes? Although there are two peasants. Peasants can't do much, but Jen could get herself three more points. Or she could just pass, and she could carry these three into next round, so she'll have a very big next round. I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to pass as well, in which case she... Uh, so she did two actions. I did two actions. She's going into next round with three guys. I'm going into one, next round with a special guy. I've got twice as much money and more provisions than her, more ways to score points. Um, but she's got a... You know, for her, it's very easy to fortify because she's made that investment. Oh, by the way, when she did that, did I get... I don't remember if I did or not. When she did the second fortify, I might have forgotten. Oh, and I certainly forgot. I was supposed to make another coin and another provision. Ah, so many bonuses. Which meant, I think that meant, which meant that um, Inquisition came a little bit faster. But, you know, again, cling on subtitles, folks. Uh, they're there for a reason. So anyway, so Jen, Jen is saving three. I'm saving one. And um, I'm going to be the first player. This guy's gone, so um, nobody goes away. But new ones come out. Uh, this architect, who Jen would have liked to recruit, because, I mean, then she'd get even more for doing development. But anyway, gone. Slide on over. Two more come out. Another architect. And an acolyte, which is if you do commissions, you make money. Making that money. Okay. And, um, right. So, 
we find out, we enter the third round, what is the last thing the king wants us to do? Hey, it's convert. Uh, if I can convert five guys, I make eight points. That's the best turnaround. And I've already been working on conversions. I've already converted two. And I was already planning on converting more anyway. So that's nice for me. And I'm definitely going to get that done. Jen's definitely going to get this done. The question is, will either of us get that done? Because there's only so much time. But hey, remember, when we hit the third round, we also get the first King's bonus. These are additional worker placement spots. Only one player can use it. If you send a warrior or a criminal over here, you can spend a buck to pay off your debts or get rid of two suspicion. Noice, noice, noice. That debt collector, he's going to come in handy. Who needs to develop stuff when I can just get extra workers by, um, you know, accruing debt and then getting rid of it? Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay. Uh, one, two, there's, and we can get some more criminals there. One, two, three. And uh, once again, we now have to choose... What paladin joins us? And so, absolution doesn't cost silver. My next time I do absolution would cost me too, but that makes it free. Development makes it cheaper. So I could maybe start doing... I mean, I could have done development before. And it's not like I didn't have enough money for it, but if I got him, I definitely want to take advantage of it. Or converting requires no silver, because now I'm getting to the point where my third conversion... And I want to convert every round. So this guy... Yeah, I think... I think it's time. Uh, he's waited long enough. He's going to be my go-to this round. He's going to help me convert and save me some money and give me that faith that I need for a big, deep, deep conversion. And meanwhile, do I want Mr. Absolution to come back next time or Mr. Development to come back next time? Because the other one goes to the bottom of the deck and this will be the third guy. Whichever, I mean, I'll, I will see one of these at the end of the game in the last round and then the uh, other one I'll see next round. Uh... Well, there will be no, there will not be much reason to develop at the end of the game. Whereas I might desperately need absolution at the end of the game to get one of these last bonuses. So I think I'd like him to potentially show up at the end of the game. And so maybe next round I'll do some development because I'll still have half the game on me. So I've done that. That means I've got a warrior and a cleric to join my ne'er do well criminal. And then I take one of these. Um, all right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do another conversion, which I've got everybody I need. And what else am I going to do? Oh man, so much stuff. I want to start collecting my or paying off my debts, which means I need oh, I need a warrior to come here and a warrior to come there. So maybe two warriors and two peasants is the way to go. But remember, I've got a warrior in the form of my criminal. So I could go that way. Oh man. So I okay, so I know I'm going to do another conversion. Which is going to take three guys because I haven't done any development. And then I'll have um, you know, two or three guys to do another action. Is this the time when I actually pray and try to convert twice in one round? Well, if I was ever going to do it, now would be the time because it would save me four. And I've got um, four faith, which means I can get any of these three. So I have a much better shot at converting. Maybe this is the time that I finally pray and pay two bucks to do a conversion twice. Because I have one, two, three, and, um, and then one, two, three. But then that means I can't pay off my debts. But hey, I could do that next round. I know Jen's not going to come here because she has no suspicion or no debts. Urgh. Yeah, but I'd say four bucks if I do a double conversion this round. So that'd be pretty cool. And hey, this one will give me points for absolution at the end of the game. This will give me points for garrisons, which I might make a go for. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's see. So could I do it? Because I'd have this and I'd have this and I'd have somebody else. And then I need another monk and another warrior. Can I get another monk and another warrior? I can get a monk. Yes, I can if I take this. So I'm taking this. All right, which means another criminal joins my ne'er-do-wells and another cleric and two lousy uh, serfs and more suspicion is cast upon me, which gives me another coin, which means we're closer to um, the Inquisition and that's gone. And I've got my guy. So... I got my group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm good to go. Jen, meanwhile, what is her choice? Hey, it's Mr. Recruit. It's Mr. Garrison, also known as Mr. Hat. And Mr. Commissioning requires no provisions. Jen is, uh, remember, we do want a garrison. So if Jen wanted to take a shot at garrisoning, she could go on ahead and grab him. Um, right, garrisoning requires merchants and warriors. She has one merchant. She'd get another merchant and another warrior. She could get more. So she could try to go. Hey, she could try to pray and get a double garrison. But she has. She'd have no clerics if she does that. If she goes for the commission, oh, what's she gonna do? 
It's a tough choice, folks, but I'm not going to make you um, suffer watching me make that choice. I'm just going to stop right there because at this point, I think you have a pretty good idea of what it feels like to play Paladins of the West Kingdom. If you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.